Good evening. Welcome to this joint Ash Wednesday service of St. Giles Presbyterian Church and also Baitang Community Church. My name is Paul Wu, uh, and with Pastor Dan Chuk Ri, uh, we will be uh, leading the service tonight. This is, uh, as I explained last night, part two uh, of our uh, joint uh, ministry of uh, Pancake and Ash. And I hope that you uh, all enjoyed the pancake last night. And, uh, and I see a number of you returning tonight, so good for you. And uh, just want to say that this uh, sort of joint ministry between a Presbyterian congregation and a Mennonite uh, congregation is wonderful. Uh, this is what Christian unity is about. Uh, it is in our small corner of the world. I'd like to acknowledge also those who are here uh, via Zoom uh, and also teleconference. Uh, we won't have the our usual Sunday uh, passing of the peace method to greet you, but I, I do acknowledge uh, that you're here with us. Uh, and also that this video, uh, the, the recording of the service uh, will be posted on YouTube. Uh, and we do know that uh, a number of St. Giles members uh, also watch uh, these videos uh, at the time of their convenience. So you're welcome as well. I like to acknowledge the territory on which we gather and worship is the traditional and unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. The Algonquin people has been living here since time immemorial, and we are honored uh, that we are able to gather uh, on this land. And just a word about the bulletin. Uh, the bulletin, the bolded portion is usually the response portion. So I invite you to read uh, the bolded part. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our brokenness, may obtain of you the glory of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us sing hymn 194. Come, let us to the Lord our God.
<clears throat> Would you pray with me? Holy One, Creator, Redeemer, and Guide of our lives, from you comes peace, and we trust in your goodness and grace. In you we find wisdom and claim hope in your presence with us. By you we are redeemed, and we learn to love. You are our beginning and our end, the first and the last, the forgiver and redeemer of all things. We worship you now, triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, ever three and ever one, now and always. Would you say the Lord's Prayer with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Shout out. Do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion to the house of Jacob, their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They want God on their side. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. You fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast? a day acceptable to the Lord. Is not this the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If re you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong, and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt you shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. The next reading is from Psalm 51, it's verses 1 through 17, and we start with the refrain.
Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you alone I have sinned and done what is evil in your sight. But you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Put a new right spirit within me. Pass me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me in a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of all your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall deliver praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice, if I were to give a burnt offering, it, you would not be pleased. A sacrifice acceptable to God, spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Next reading is from Matthew, chapter 6, verses 1 through 6, and then 16 through 21. Beware of practicing your righteousness before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father, who is in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look somber like the hypocrites, for they mark their faces to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father, who is in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, that is where your heart will be also. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Let us sing him 638, Take Time to Be Holy. of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. What does the Lord require of us? What, with what should we come before the Lord? And for those who have been indoctrinated in the Christian faith, uh, a bit too long. I'm sure that you're able to recite the answer provided by Prophet Micah. That is, to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. And I have no doubt that is a good and proper answer, giving us an overall recap, a well-balanced summation of what truly matters to our Lord God. But one has to admit that it is lacking in details. It's missing the fine print. 
How does one practice justice? How does one exercise mercy? And how does one walk humbly with our God? It is praxis, uh, that is the practice of the Christian faith, of how one live out the life of as disciples of Christ. Uh, that is in our meditation tonight. As we mark the beginning of Lent. Lent is the season, the 40 days before Easter, before that Easter Sunday, that glorious resurrection of the Lord. Lent is a season which beckons us to reflect on our praxis. It is a season where we are called to remember the ultimate sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, on the cross. It is during Lent that we are called to carry our own cross uh, in small steps, uh, yet in concrete form. The scriptural text in the gospel reading of Matthew chapter 6 gives us a small sample of the teaching of Jesus as the Sermon on the Mount. Four specific practices uh, were uh, mentioned, giving alms, prayer, fasting, and storing up treasures. In the context of the first century Palestine and Israel, the dialoguing partners of Jesus of Nazareth were the Pharisees, those who were uh, strict practitioners of the law whom Jesus had, had a habit uh, of calling out as hypocrites. No doubt much of their spiritual practices were a bit self-serving, and perhaps a bit self-justify. I don't want to spend too much time talking about the East of Pharisees, uh, of what was wrong with them. It is not fruitful in my view uh, in preparation for Lent. For members and adherents of St. Giles, at least those who heard my sermon in the past Sunday, uh, you will know that I've been reading the book, uh, Immersing Myself, uh, in the book authored by James Cohen, titled Desert Father, A Journey in the Wilderness with St. Anthony. Now, Anthony of Egypt, the first of many desert fathers, is someone who takes spiritual practices of the Christian faith to the extreme. He is someone that, that fascinates me to no end. He is someone who rejects, rejected uh, both the empire uh, and the church, more specifically the access of the church, and decided to chart out a, a, a new path uh, to the desert. First, as a lonely hermit, and he spent 15 years alone in the desert by himself. And then later returning uh, to bring a group of disciples back out to the desert again. Anthony would be known as the father of the monastic movement, the ascetic movement that uh, really changed the Christian faith to a fairly large degree. Throughout the third and the fourth century of common era, a select group of men and women took upon themselves the task of renovating consciousness. And they did this by a deliberate act of withdrawal. They understood the true journey worth taking is the inner one the one they call the Sahara of the mind, where dryness, both physical and spiritual, compels one to dig deeper, much deeper, into one's inner core being. Through repeated prayer, extreme fasting, 
and total social isolation, Anthony and the Desert Fathers master the art of apathia, or holy stillness. They understood this as the mean to the end of theosis, that is total union with God. It's fascinating that the Western church do not talk about this aspect of Christian theology as much as the Eastern church uh, or counterpart uh, does. It's equally fascinating that someone is willing to go to that extreme to be with God, to experience not just the presence of the Holy Spirit, but the presence of the God self. Lent is a season for us as Christians. Living in this contemporary, postmodern, highly advanced technologically and highly unequal materially society to pause, to reflect, and perhaps to repent. Have we allowed our affluence to be built on the back of the impoverished? Have we turned our gaze away from injustice and inequality that is happening in our own backyard? Have we forgotten to prioritize that inner journey, the one that takes us nearer and closer to God? Oh, I'm not telling you to go to the desert. But I don't want to leave you with these tough, soul-searching questions without some practical practices during, re during Lent. So instead of the usual giving up something for Lent, the challenge I put before you is to take up something during Lent. Now, what would you be willing to take up during Lent? What spiritual practices would be fitting to that inner journey? I'm praying. Why not use the next 40 days as an opportunity to establish a habit of daily prayer? Now, considering, uh, consider combining your prayer with an already established part of your daily routine. For example, uh, say a word of prayer in your heart while you brush your teeth. You do brush your teeth every day, I hope. Or uh, make a commitment to pray uh, for a different family member, uh, a, a friend, uh, who may not uh, know Christ and, and who are in your heart and pray for them during your daily commute. I'm checking in with God. Consider doing a daily exam. Daily exam is a long uh, standing spiritual practice championed by Ignatius of Loyola. It's pretty simple. At the end of each day, simply ask yourself, at what moment did I sense God's presence today? And then ask yourself, when did I feel like God was far away? and reflect on these questions and you can journal them or you can simply just have a, a short time of a prayer, of quiet time with God with these questions. On fasting, uh, instead of, well, you can try fasting, but you can try something else. Uh, for example, prepare simplified meals such as beans and rice, uh, staple of a lot of 
people in the third world countries uh, as an alternative to fasting. So if you go on St. Giles' website, uh, look for Lent 2023 uh, under the Worship Services tab, and you will find a link to 16 different recipes uh, of making beans and rice with, with beans and rice from different parts of the world. Now these simplified recipes, and, and there are many ways one could cook inexpensive meal with fairly simple ingredients. And consider giving the money saved uh, during this 40 days of Lent, uh, saving that to a worthy charity such as Presbyterian World Services and Development, uh, or if there's a charity organization that by town champions, uh, that will be good as well. Um, practicing generosity, consider making uh, an offering box, uh, do that at your own home, uh, make a box that's large enough so that you can put one non-perishable item into the box every day. And at the end of the 40 days of Lent, you could then deliver the box uh, to a local food bank, such as the Centertown Emergency Food Center. Now, all of these spiritual practices during Lent uh, is posted uh, on St. Giles' website. And once again, it's under the Worship Service tab, uh, Lent 2023. And do check this out and see which challenges, uh, which challenge or challenges uh, you would like to take up. And may God bless us in this season of Lent as we seek to remember the sacrifice of Jesus Christ our Lord, striving to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I always remember, um, what was it, uh, at the beginning of a service, uh, there's a story of a minister that will post a telephone number uh, in the screen, and they say that number is a local pizza delivery <laughs> restaurant, so anybody's phone ring during service, then pizza's on you. <laughs> Please join me in this prayer of confession. Uh, and there's a, uh, a, uh, a, um, a response portion. Let us pray. God of life and love, you hate nothing that you have created. You forgive the sins of all who turn to you in confession, and so we pray together. Forgive, Forgive the words, words we failed to speak, and those we should not have spoken. Forgive the good we failed to do, and the evil we have done. Forgive the love we have withheld, and the grudges we have cherished. Forgive what we have been, a man who we are and direct who you would have us be through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Hear and believe the good news. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone and the new life has come. Know that you are forgiven. And so in Christ, forgive one another. Amen.
the early followers of Jesus observed the days of Jesus' passion and resurrection with various acts of devotion. It became their custom to prepare to celebrate the great mystery of Easter with a season of prayer, contemplation, and fasting. Let us begin our observation of Lent with a time of self-examination and repentance. Then let us continue through the season with prayer and fasting, reading and meditating on God's holy word day by day. We begin in silence as we listen to God's call on our lives for this season of Lent. Almighty God, you have created us from the dust of the earth and let these ashes be a sign of your mortality, penitence, and humility. Remind us it is only by your grace and love that we receive everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. During this imposition of ashes, uh, I invite you to come forward uh, to form two lines, uh, whichever line you choose, it's mm -hmm. fine. Uh, and uh, as you come forward, uh, an, uh, a sign of the cross will be marked on your forehead. 
uh, and, and as we remind you uh, that uh, you are made of ashes and to ashes you shall return. Please. Remember, you are made of ashes. To ashes you shall return. You are made of ashes. To ashes you shall return. Would you pray with me? Holy and merciful God, we confess that the world is not as you created it to be. Hear our prayers for the world and for one another. In this world and in our lives, our love is imperfect and often fails. Help us to love you heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. I'm going to pray, Lord, in your mercy, and then you respond, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this world and in our lives, we have been deaf to your call to serve. Strengthen us to be of service to those in need with a spirit of generosity and kindness. Equip us to join with others to build a kingdom of grace in the world of love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this world and in our lives, anger, pride, and impatience hinder life-giving relationships among us. With your tender mercy, restore our broken souls and broken communities and heal our relationships with one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this world and in our lives, self-indulgence, envy, and greed lead to the exploitation of others. Open our eyes to see how our actions affect the earth and its peoples, and give us courage to work for justice when we see it as lacking. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this world and in our lives, prejudice, fear, and contempt for others degrade human life. Open our hearts to recognize that every person is created in your image. Inspire us to treat others with reverence for the life you give each and all of us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this world and in our lives, waste and pollution destroy your creation. The lifestyles we have chosen threaten the very earth you made. 
challenge us to become better stewards of the earth for your glory and for the future of those who come after us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer these prayers and the unspoken prayers of our hearts in the name of our Jesus, our Redeemer, and our friend. Amen. Let us sing the closing hymn, 722, Lord, whose love through humble service. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you from this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.